Today we're going to look at the life and the times of William Shakespeare. So let's start at the beginning. He was born in 1564. Now we're not quite sure about the exact date, so we do go by April. So April 26th, 1564, he was baptized in Stratford-upon-Avon in Warwickshire, England. Uh, however, we do believe that his birthday was probably a few days before, so we'd like to celebrate his birthday on April 23rd, 1564. And then he was also born into a fairly wealthy family. His father's name was John Shakespeare, his mother was Mary Arden, and he was the first son of eight children. Now, he didn't have an extensive education, but because his father was a middle class, he was a maker of gloves, um, he also did a little bit of local politics. Shakespeare did have enough money in order to go off to the Stratford Grammar School. Now, the school specifically served prominent citizens of the community, but we don't know exactly how long he attended the school. Now, Shakespeare, the person himself, November 28, 1582, he married Anne Hathaway, who was a farmer's daughter. Now, usually a, a son from a prominent family such as the Shakespeare's likely would not have been put into a marriage such as that, and specifically because she's older than him. She was 26 at the time of their marriage, and he was only 18. We do have questions. Maybe it was true love, but we do have questions as to why William did marry Anne. So they did have children. Now, on May 26, 1583, seven months after they got married, Susanna, their first daughter, was baptized. And in 1584, they had twins. Twins Hamnet and Judith were born. Unfortunately, in 1596, Hamnet died at the age of 11. So also around this time, we actually don't have records of what William Shakespeare was doing. Um, maybe he was writing plays and they were just not getting produced. We're not sure. But a lot of critics speculate that he was not working on plays or poetry at the time. Perhaps because he had a family to take care of, he went out and got a job. Maybe he was a school teacher. Maybe he was a butcher's apprentice. He could possibly even be running from the law during this time because he was in a prominent enough family. It's interesting that we have no uh, records from this time period for him at all. But in 1592, we find our first evidence of Shakespeare, and he's now in London. He's established himself as a playwright and an actor. Now, Henry Rothsley became his sponsor, or the person who supplies the playwrights with finances in order to produce their plays. So then in January 1593, just as Shakespeare was about to get into uh, working as a playwright and an actor in earnest, the plague comes to London. So a halt is seen in Shakespeare's work in the theater. The theaters were ordered to be closed because the plague was raging through London, and he concentrated then on his poetry writing during this time. And at this point in time, we're going to see some of his most famous sonnets being written. So then in 1594, after the plague seems to have subsided, Shakespeare was the founding member of a troop of actors called Lord Chamberlain's Men. And by 1603, they're going to change their name to the King's Men when King James I took reign. So Shakespeare became wealthy as a director, a writer, a sometimes actor, and specifically a stockholder in this troop called the King's Men. So then in 1611, he has made enough money that Shakespeare's just decided he doesn't need to work anymore. So he leaves London and goes back to Stratford-upon-Avon to be with his family. He basically retires, which was kind of unheard of in 1611. Most people couldn't retire. Uh, and then March 25th in 1616, about five years after his retirement, we see him making his will, which makes sense because less than a month later, on April 23rd, 1616, he dies at the age of 52. Now, we're not sure what the cause of death is, but he obviously knew it was coming if he made his will and died less than a month later. He also wrote his own epitaph, so what is inscribed upon his tombstone. And during this time, when graveyards were full, people would dig up someone's corpse and burn it so another could be buried there. But this disgusted Shakespeare, and he did not want to be disinterred. So his epitaph is a little bit almost like a curse as if to try to tell people, do not remove my body from this spot. And so his epitaph on his tombstone reads, Good friends, for Jesus' sake forbear to dig the bones enclosed here. Blessed be the man that spares these stones 
and cursed be he that moves my bones. As you can imagine, Shakespeare has been famous enough nobody has wanted to disturb him. Matter of fact, people go and visit his graves almost on a daily basis uh, because of his fame, so he has not yet been disturbed. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by, guys. If you want to hear about more about William Shakespeare, about his plays or poetry, please write down in the comments. I'd be happy to hear what it is that you'd like to hear. Uh, or if you'd like to hear about other authors, I'd like to hear some comments too. Uh, if you liked this, please give a like and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for stopping by.